Welcome to another Greater Bethel Biblical Discussion. Our pastor is the Reverend Solomon J. Roberts, Jr. Um, our first lady is Sister Chelsea Roberts. And I am your host for tonight, Yvonne Roberts, the Christian Education Director. And tonight we're going to be studying St. John chapter 9. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to open up with um, a prayer. We're going to open up with a prayer. Father, we want to say thank you for letting us live to see another day. Dear God, we just ask you to come in the midst, be a part of our biblical discussion. Um, open our understanding, dear God. Remember the bereaved families, those who are sick and shut in, dear God, and those who, um, who are going to watch tonight. Uh, give them a special blessing and those who watch later on father we ask you to also touch them as well in Jesus Christ's name we pray and say thank you amen and amen so once again um, I'm Yvonne Roberts your host for tonight as we are doing biblical discussion we're coming from St. John chapter 9 so good to see you brother Scott God bless you thank you for joining us all right so First, I'm going to go ahead and read the entire chapter 9. Those of you who have your Bibles, if you would, please look along and read with me. Um, I will be reading from the King James Version. I will be reading from the King James Version. Okay. St. John, chapter 9. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? this man or his parents, that he was born blind. Jesus answered, neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Verse four, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Verse five, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he, he and Jesus, had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittles, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Verse 10. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind, the man who was blind. And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again the Pharisees asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed, and I do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. They said unto the blind man again, What saith thou of him? And that he hath opened your eyes. He said, he is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received the sight until they called his parents of him that had received the sight. And they asked him saying, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? And his parents answered them saying, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But by what means now he seeth, we know not, or who hath opened his eyes, 
we do not know. He is of age. Ask him. He shall speak for himself. These words spake the parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he, Jesus, was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, give God the praise, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, What did he do to thee? How open he thine eyes? He, the man that was blind, answered them, I have told you already, and ye did not hear. In other words, you didn't believe what I said. Wherefore would you hear it again? Will you also be his disciples? Then they reviled him. That means they got very upset with him and said, Thou art his disciple. We are Moses' disciples. We know that God spake to Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he came. The man answered and said unto them, Ah, why, herein is a marvelous thing that ye know not from whence he is come. Yet he opened mine eyes. Now, we know that God hears not sinners, but if a man be a worshiper of God and does the will of God, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man was not of God, he could do nothing. They, being the Jews, answered and said unto him, Thou were altogether born in sin, dost thou teach us? In other words, you trying to lecture us? And they cast him out. They cast him out of the synagogue. And Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he, being Jesus, found him, he said unto him, Does thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And the man that was born blind said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped Jesus. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see might, I'm sorry, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? And Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, you should have no sin. But now ye say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. That's the reading of the word of the Lord, St. John, the ninth chapter. So we want to say God bless you, Brother, Brother Bangs. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Sister Golden, for joining us. Um, so here we are in chapter 9. So let's go back and look at some of the chapters we've already covered. As for this month, we've been covering St. John. So um, in chapter 1, we see Jesus is the Word of God. Chapter 2, Jesus turns water into wine. Chapter 3, Jesus is God's only begotten son. Chapter 4, Jesus is the living water and the light. Chapter 5, Jesus heals a lame man and he was sent by the Father. Chapter 6, Jesus is the bread of life. Chapter 7, Jesus makes a man completely whole. Chapter 8, Jesus does not condemn but commands go and sin no more as he's talking to the woman who was caught in adultery. For Jesus is the light of the world and before Abraham was, Jesus said, I am. So he existed even before Abraham came. And this brings us to chapter nine as we just read through chapter nine. So remember that last verse of chapter eight, then they took up stones because when Jesus said that he existed before Abraham, 
Oh, it caused the Jews to be so mad. They picked up stones to cast at Jesus. But Jesus hid himself and he went out of the temple, going through the midst of them and so passed by. Now, as he came out, as he passed through them, passed by them, <laughs> that brings us to chapter nine. Chapter nine tells us that, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was born blind. He was blind from his birth. And this is where chapter nine takes up. And this is an exciting chapter. So as we look, as we've already read through the chapter, now we're going to study it through a little game. And the game is complete the verse, or you may want to call it fill in the Bible verse. So this is the way we're going to play this game. So I hope you're ready. So um, if you have it, go ahead and call your family, mem family members, tell them to join us here on Facebook Live. Go get your neighbors too. All right, grab those Bibles. Um, I will be, most of the answers will be coming from the King James Version, since that's the version that I read. There might be a couple from the New International Version, but I will let you know which ones those are. Get your fingers ready. Go ahead and exercise them. Get ready, get ready. <laughs> then we're going to have an exciting evening studying the Word of God. Um, so this is just a fun way that we're going to delve into the Bible. So, you know, this is a fun way also to just hide the Word of God in your hearts. Okay, so I do want to make a couple of notes first. As I said earlier, I will be using the King James Version. Not all, but many of the um, questions, um, about five, about five of the questions um, will have a cash value. So you will have a chance of earning $5 for each of the correct answers if you're the first one to type it in and I see your answer first. Okay, maybe you could treat yourself to some ice cream for doing a good job, but more so it's an encouragement to help you hide the word of God in your hearts. So go ahead, grab your grandkids, grab your friends, grab your family, grab your siblings, and let's get ready to earn some cash as we play fill in the Bible verse. <laughs> okay, once again, this is just a fun way to encourage you to keep studying the word of God. So the first person to type in the correct answer, King James Version, unless I tell you otherwise what it is, wins the funds. So um, once again, all the questions will not earn um, cash value, just, a surprise, just the surprise ones, and I will let you know ahead of time which ones will earn the $5, okay? So with that being said, oh, also, if you win, if I say you won first, please private message me your cash app for the funds and I will send those to you um, once biblical discussion is over. Are you ready? All right, grab those Bibles. You know how we do it, kind of like we draw a sword. Get ready, get ready, here we go. Question number one, as a matter of fact, question number one will be a $5 question. So question number one says, Jesus saw a man who was blind from his blank. This is um, the ninth chapter, verse one, the first person to type it in. Jesus saw a man who was blind from his blank. Please type it in. Verse one, okay, Brother Scott typed it in first. Brother Scott, I'm going to need your cash app. If you type me your cash app, please. Thank you. So from birth is correct. And it looks like Miss Golden was immediately behind him. Um, so it goes to Brother Scott. Uh, birth is correct. All right, let's look at number two. This caused the disciples to ask Jesus a question. They, they said, Master, who did blank? This man or his parents that he was born blind? This is found in verse 2 of the ninth chapter. Okay? Who did blank? This man or his parents that he was born blind? Very good. Sister Golden says sin. Sin is correct. All right, let's go to the next one. Number three. Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the blank of blank should be made manifest in him. This is in verse three. Jesus answered, neither this man 
had man sinned, nor his parents, but that the blank of blank should be made manifest in him. I know this is a two-part one, but if you would, please type it in. And you can find, oh, very good. Sister Golden again. That's right. Um, the glory of God. Jesus answered, neither this man sinned nor his parents, but that the glory of God should be made manifest in him. And this is chapter 9, verse 3. And I just want to encourage you that sometimes things, the things that you're going through, is because God wants to manifest his glory through you. And once he does, then he wants you to give him the glory. Return the glory to God. What do I mean by that? All I'm saying is when God blesses you, he gives you that special healing or that special blessing. He wants you to tell others what he has done. So, for example, I, I want to share this. I'm going to give you the short versions. Many of you have heard my long version, but I'm going to give you a short version. So, when I was in third grade, my um, older sister, um, she went to my dad and said, Dad, I think Yvonne um, need glasses. And he said, why do you say that? And she said, well, have you noticed she's always squinting? And my dad, he noticed me and he said, you know what? You're right, she's always squinting. And so my dad took me to the doctor to have my eyes examined. And once they did, the doctor, I'll never forget, the doctor told my dad, he said, oh, yes, Mr. Williams, she is clinically blind. And because of that, he said, she would, I would never be a candidate for contact lens. I had a double stigmatism in both eyes. And so therefore, he said, the best we could do is give her bifocals. So here I was in third grade wearing bifocals. So the kids no longer called me four eyes, they were calling me six eyes, because I surely had that line between the two. All right, so I needed foresight and I needed nearsight. <laughs> so, Anyway, so from being in third grade all the way up until um, I turned 21, I wore bifocals. So even my graduation pictures, my senior pictures, had me with those thick glasses, as some people call the Coca-Cola bottoms. <laughs> yeah, the huge glasses. Anyway, I'll never forget when I was living in New York and I used to sing in one of the choirs up there, we were supposed to be on program to um, be the choir for a young minister. God had given the gifts of healing and we were at the church in Brooklyn, New York and the young minister, I'll never forget, I think it was a jubilee service, whereas the jubilee service started later than, um, if I remember correctly, I think it started either 10.30 or 11, but at midnight, everybody was supposed to just shout and give a praise to God. And to make a long story short, I remember him saying, he gave his testimony, how God healed him and how he wanted the gift of healing and God gave it to him. So he said, anybody who wants to be healed, come in the line. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is to let you know that sometimes the things you're going through is only so that God works can be manifested through your life. And different ones got up and they went in the prayer line. And I stayed in the choir stand, you know, just singing and praising God. And I heard a voice say, hey, isn't there something you want God to do for you? By now, I had become so accustomed to wearing bifocals and by the time I made it to high school, they came out with a progressive lens and I thought I was living it up. Yes, when, especially when dad helped me to get my progressive lens, you know, it's clear inside the building and as soon as you walk out, it transitions to shades couldn't tell me nothing. So I just knew I had it going on. So I'm like, oh, I'm good, I'm good. And besides, I'm not gonna get in the prayer line and say something that I'm healed when I'm not. So I'm good. So different people were getting healed left and right. And I heard it again, don't you want God to do anything for you? And I was like, you know, if you would heal my eyes, so I don't have to wear bifocals anymore. Cause by now, I mean, folks were just praising God. This one lady got healed. Um, she, he told her to go to the bathroom and check herself. There was a growth she had. And she came out of the bathroom screaming and yelling that it was gone. God had healed her. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go in the line. Because I know if God heals me, it's going to be for real. So I go in the line. And I remember the, the minister, 
he asked me, what do you want God to do for you? And I said, well, um, I want God to heal my eyes so I can see. And he said, oh, um, he said, you wear glasses? And I was like, yes, I wear bifocals. So he said, look in the audience. Tell me what you see. And as I look in the audience, all I could see is shades of colors. I could never see the outlining of anything. But I thought everybody saw like that. I didn't know that, um, th that everybody didn't see that way. And so he said, well, tell me what's on that clock up there. And I was like, what clock? He said, believe you me, there's a clock up above those two doors. And the church in Brooklyn was a huge church. So, of course, I couldn't even recognize the people who were just past my arm length. So I definitely couldn't recognize the clock up above the wall. So um, I, 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 didn't, I couldn't recognize it. So he laid his hands on my eyes. And all he said was, in the name of Jesus Christ, eyes come straight. And so he said, now look out, what do you see? And I looked out and I said, I'm not going to lie. You know, I told, I told myself, I'm not going to tell the untruth. All I see is shades and colors. He said, you don't recognize anybody? And I was like, no. He said, he prayed again. He put anointed oil on my eyes. And he laid his hands over my eyes. And once again, he said, in the name of Jesus Christ, eyes come straight. And he said, what do you see? And I said, I only see shades of colors. And he said, God is doing the work. Go back where you were and just give God the glory and praise. So I said, okay. So I went back up in the choir stand and we were just praising God as folks were getting healed left and right. And um, I'll never forget my aunt, my aunt Katie was in um, an accident and she was wearing a neck brace. And I, I was living with them at the time. So I knew that she had to turn her whole body in order to turn. Well, she went in the prayer line and he prayed for her. And when she was able to take off that neck brace and turn without pain, we all just start praising God. I started praising God. And in the midst of praising God, it was as if something had took my head and placed it on the stand. And all of a sudden, my eyes focused on that white spot. And it was as if I could see an artist's um, uh, pen uh, a paintbrush because all of a sudden I saw the outlining of a circle and I started looking and I was blinking what and it went completely around and then all of a sudden I saw a 12 at the top then a one a two a three a four and I'm looking as the numbers are popping up on this clock at a distance and I'm seeing the hour hand the minute hand the second hand and all of a sudden I just start praising God I can see I can see and of course he called me down to share and return the glory to God that I was blind. I was wearing bifocals for, what, 13, 14 years. And here, miraculously, God had healed my eyes, and now I could see. And no longer did I see double. I saw double before. Before God had healed my eyes, I saw double everything. Even if a person was standing talking to me, I would see double. I didn't see the outlinings of them, but I would see double. I saw double when I drove. I saw double when I walked. I saw double doors. I saw double everything, the double double. But when God healed me, he brought it into alignment and I no longer see double. And that was all the way back in 1991. God healed me and I could give him the glory and praise. Hallelujah. I still, I don't see double. I see the outlinings and I give God the praise and I can see clocks. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just wanted to share that because in verse 3, when Jesus said, Neither has this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the glory of God should be, um, that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Sometimes you may go through, and you may be like me, had to go through 14 years of wearing thick bifocals and hearing what people calling you, not four eyes, but six eyes and some of anything else. But listen, if you put your trust in God, who is to say what you're going through is not just so that the works of God would be manifest. And as he give you that blessing for you to return the glory to God, because he's the one who's worthy of all the praise. Amen and amen. Glory to God. So good to have you, Brother Moses. Thank you for joining us, Brother Moses Roberts. And um, 
So let's go ahead and we, we're still on this biblical discussion. We're in the chapter, chapter 9 of St. John. And tonight is the night that we are giving away $5 questions. So here we go. It's time for another $5 question. This is the third. Uh, this is the second one. All right. So here's the question. Well, it's to fill in the blank. Jesus said, as long as I am in the world, I am the blank of blank. So the first person to type in the answer gets these five dollars. Jesus said, as long as I am in the world, I am the blank of blank. Three words. And you can find this in St. John 9 and 5. Amen. Glory to God, Sister, Sister Golden. Amen. So as long as I am in the world, I am the blank of blank. First person to type it in. We'll get um, $5. This is a King James Version. Jesus said, as long as I am in the world, and this is verse 5, I am the blank of blank. Okay, my check in here. Checking to see the first one to have it up. As long as I am in the world, I am the blank of blank. Okay, Sister Golden, that is correct. She says, I am the light of the world. Amen. Jesus says, I said three, my, my apologies. Blank of the blank. Okay, light of the world. So four words. Thank you so much, Sister Golden. And if you would um, message me your cash app, I will definitely send you those $5. All right, so let's go. Remember, some of these questions will be worth $5. Others are just questions that I would like for you to type in the answer. So here's the next one. God bless you, Sister Long. So good to have you join us. When Jesus had spoken, he spat on the ground and made blank of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the blank. All right, so this is in verse 6. First person to type it in, please. Now, this one is not a $5 point, but I still would like for you to type in your answer. Once again, this is verse 6. It's found in verse 6. We are playing fill in the Bible verse. When Jesus has spoken, he spat on the ground and made blank of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the blank. Okay, if you would, please type it in. Once again, verse 6. When Jesus has spoken, he spat on the ground. Very good, Sister Golden again. That's right, clay. Clay is the correct answer. Amen. Clay. So he made clay of the spittles, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. He laid the clay on his eyes. So for me, when the minister laid his hands on, in, on my eyes and said, In the name of Jesus Christ, eyes come straight. I had to exercise my faith that God was going to do it, and God did it. For this man, God, Jesus put the clay there, and he told him to do something. So let's see the next one. And Jesus said unto him, go blank in the pool of Siloam. This is found in verse 7. What did Jesus tell him to do? Jesus said, go blank in the pool of Siloam. Good to see you, Brother Foy. God bless you. We're reading from St. John, the ninth chapter. So good to see you, Sister Black. God bless you as well. We're in St. John, the ninth chapter. Brother Foy, amen. Wash, thank you, Sister Golden. Sister Golden was the first one to type in this answer. That's right. Wash was the correct answer. Now, this reminds me of the story of Naaman in the Old Testament. 2 Kings 5, for those of you who want to look at the reference and read it on later, 2 Kings 5, 1 through 17, Naaman, when he was told to go wash in the Jordan River because he had leprosy, and he had, and I'm going to just quickly mention this because we are studying St. John, the ninth chapter. We're not studying about Naaman, but I want to share with you a correlation of the, the two of the things that he and this blind man had in common. So first of all, by him being over so many other people, you know, he was like, 
Jordan, that's a dirty river. Why can't, why can't he tell me to go somewhere else? Why didn't the prophet come out and wave his hand or cause lightning to come and cause it to disappear? And then that young servant girl said, look, if he would have told you to do something great, you would have done it. But this is something simple. All he's telling you to do is go and wash. So Naaman went. He had to humble himself. He went and washed in the Jordan River. And once he did, by humbling himself, then he went and obeyed the word of the Lord. He believed that if he did what was said, that he would be cured of leprosy. Humbleness, obedience, and believing. Faith. Putting those three together, regardless of what it is that you're asking God for, you have to humble yourself before the mighty hands of the Lord. And he will bless you. And in due season, he will lift you up. You have to obey the word. Hide his word in your heart so that you will not sin against him. God said obedience is better than sacrifice. To obey than, the, than bulls, than the sacrifice of bulls or rams. God rather you obey what he says than for you to give him all the money you got. He'd rather you obey his word and do what he asks you to do than for you to even, I don't know, donate everything you have and go and help. The things that people do to get God's attention. He said, you know what? Don't give me those sacrifices. Just obey what I'm saying. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And then believe, faith. The Bible tells us in Hebrews, without faith it is impossible to please him. For those who come to God must believe that God is. You have to believe that God exists. And then you have to believe that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That God, I'm giving my life to you because I know you're gonna bring me through. So you have to believe that he exists. You have to believe that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So. But you have to humble yourself before the mighty hands of God. You have to obey his word. And you have to believe that his word, that God will do what he said he's going to do. He's faithful. And he will do everything he says. The Bible says that God's word will not return unto him void, but it will accomplish everything he sends it out to do. Jesus said, whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe and you shall have whatever, whatever it is you ask for. So, all right, now let's go on to the next uh, question or the next fill in the blank. I hope you're enjoying yourself. I, I am, I'm enjoying myself. The blind man, he went his way therefore. He washed and came blank. In verse seven, what did he come back doing? The blind man, he went his way therefore. He did what Jesus said, he washed. And once he did, the results came. He came blank. Type in the chat box what he came doing. He came blank. This is found in verse 7. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came blank. Seeing. Very good, Miss Golden. Thank you so much. Miss Golden, once again, Miss Golden's on the ball. That's right. He came seeing. He came seeing. Thank you, thank you. And Brother Foy said he came clean. Thank you. So, Brother Foy, I did share with those who are, um, uh, we're doing a, we, we read through um, St. John, the ninth chapter. We read through the King James Version. And um, I, we're playing a game called Fill in the Bible Verse. And all the verses will be, the answers will be coming from the King James Version, with the exception of a couple um, with the exception of one that would be the New International Version. We have some that are just regular questions, and then we have five of the questions that would be worth $5 each. So um, the, the answer that we were looking for, but yes, he did come back clean. Um, the blind man came back seeing. Um, this is from St. John chapter 9, verse 7. All right, so now it's time for another $5 question. So I hope you're ready. Here we go. When the neighbors and others asked the blind, man, the blind man, how are your eyes opened? He replied, blank made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed 
and I received sight. This is found in uh, verse 11. What's the answer? Found in verse 11. So once again, this is a $5 question. When the neighbors and the others asked a man, how were your eyes opened? He replied, blank made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. St. John, the ninth chapter, verse 11. Please type in your answer. That's right, Brother Foy, he came back seeing. That was um, for our sixth question. Now for our seventh question. Who can tell me what did the blind man say? The blind man replied, blank made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. So fill in the blank. What goes in that blank? Who did the blind man say healed his eyes or gave him sight? Amen, Brother Foy. Brother Foy got it right. Jesus, that is correct. Brother Foy, if you would please uh, message me and give me your cash app, because that was a $5 question. Um, we will cash out that $5 to you. God bless you. All right, next question. And it was the blank day when Jesus made clay and opened the blind man's eyes. This is found in verse 14. I need you to tell me, fill in the blank. And it was the blank day. What day was it when Jesus made clay and opened the blind man's eyes? If you're typing in. Oh, you're welcome, Brother Foy. God bless you. All right, so if you would type in the chat box. Once again, I'm gonna read um, the question with the blank omitted and you have to fill in the blank. And it was a blank day when Jesus made clay and opened the blind man's eyes. This is on um, verse 14. Very good, Miss Golden, the Sabbath day. That is correct, the Sabbath day. Amen, Brother Foy got it too, the Sabbath day, yes. All right, so let's go on to the next question. Therefore, says some of the Pharisees, and you can tell them, that, yeah. This man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such blank? And there was a division among them. Fill in the blank. I'm going to read it again for you. You can find this in verse 16. Therefore, says some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. In other words, he doesn't observe the Sabbath day, so he's not of God. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such blank? Fill in the blank, and there was a division among them. You'll find your answer in verse 16. You'll find your answer in verse 16. Okay, I will accept that, Brother Foy. He says signs. Very good, amen. So the King James Version says miracles, miracles, signs, and wonders. I'll accept any one of those. God bless you, amen, amen. So once again, I'm gonna read it and I'm gonna fill it in. Um, I do believe the, uh, the other version might say signs. King James Version says miracles. Therefore, says some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God because he keepeth not, he doesn't observe, the Sabbath day. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles or signs or wonders? And there was a division among them. And this is found in verse 16. Thank you. All right, Brother Foy, here we go. Number 11. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received this sight until they called the blank. Who did they call? They called the blank of him that had received this sight. You can find this in verse 18. So the Jews didn't believe what he said. They, ah, oh, you weren't born blind. They didn't believe it. They refused to believe it. Doubt, doubt will prevent you from receiving the blessings that God has for you. 
There's things that God want to do for you. But if you doubt, you're cutting it off. Doubt will prevent you from receiving what God has for you. Okay? So go ahead and type in. Once again, you can find this in verse 18. I need the answer. Parents is correct. Good job, Sister Golden. Parents is correct. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And that found in verse 18. All right, I told you I would always warn you when it was a $5 question. Here we go, this is another $5 question. $5 question. His parents answered them and said, we know that this is our son and that he was blank, blank. Type, in, type it in the chat box. First person to get it in gets the $5. His parents answered, and you can find this in verse 20. His parents answered them and said, we know that this is our son and that he was blank, blank. And I, once again, this is from the King James Version. His parents answered them and said, we know that this is our son and that he was blank, blank. Amen, Brother Foy. Born blind. God bless you. Once again, that's another $5. Amen. God bless you. So please make sure you um, private message me your cash app so I can send that to you. Unless you don't mind anyone knowing your cash app, then you can just put it in the feed. But anyway, all right. So amen. That's right. Born blind. So his parents were like, hey, we know this is our son. We know he was born blind. But they were like, we don't know how he got his sight. <laughs> All right, number 13. Why did the parents answer the Jews saying, he is of age, ask him. These words spake the parents because they blank the Jews. This, you'll find the answer in verse 22. These words spake the parents because they blank the Jews. So the reason they said, he's of age, ask him, is because they felt a certain way about the Jews, okay? Amen, that's right, Sister Golden. They feared the Jews. They feared them. So because they feared them, they weren't going to tell them that it was Jesus. That's right, they were afraid. That's right, Brother Foy, correct. So they weren't going to acknowledge or confess that it was Jesus because the Jews already said anybody who did that, they were going to put him out of the synagogue. So therefore, they said, wait, he's of age, ask him, rather than admitting that Jesus was the one who did it. All right, let's look at number 14. Why? Why did, oops, I think I kind of told the answer, but let's do it anyway. Why did they fear the Jews? Because the Jews had agreed already that if any man did blank, that he, Jesus, was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. So this is verse 22, um, and once again, this answer came from the King James, but I need to know that word, okay? The Jews had agreed already that if any man did blank that Jesus was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue, out of the temple. Okay, I'll accept that, Brother Foy. Acknowledge or confess very good. That's right. Good job, Brother Foy. So acknowledge that Jesus Christ is, was king or Jesus is the Christ. Acknowledge it. Confess it. Use in your mouth because the Bible says what? With a heart, man believes unto righteousness and confession is made unto salvation. You have to speak it. You have to speak it. You have to speak and believe it. Not just praising and um, giving lip service but speaking it that is coming forth from your heart that you truly believe it. So acknowledging that he is the Christ, saying it, yes, Jesus Christ is Lord. All right, number 15. When the Jews asked the man again concerning how he could see, finally the man replied, I told you already and ye did not hear. Wherefore would you hear it again? In other words, you didn't believe me when I told you. So if I said it again, will you believe me? And then he said, will you also be his blank? 
This is found in verse 27. Will you also be his blank? Type it in the chat box, please. Verse 27. He said, will you also be his blank? Oh, the Pharisees don't like this. This is verse 27. He said, I have told you already. In other words, I've already told you how I was blind. And Jesus, what he did so that I could see. That's right. So what? Are, are you going to be his disciples too? Very good. Thank you, Miss Golden. Thank you. Then they reviled him. Oh, they were mad at him. I can imagine them being inflamed, enraged, you know. And they said, Thou art his disciple. They're mad at him. But we are Blake's disciples. Verse 28. Who were they referring to? Who disciple did they say they belonged to? Go ahead and type that in. Whose disciple did they say that the Jews said that they were? Whose disciples did they say? Because they said, uh-uh, we're not his disciple. You're his disciple. We are Blake's disciples. I know you feel like you're, you're taking typing lessons again, right? Hey, it's all good. It's all good. Go ahead and type it in. Who's disciple? Very good, Brother Foy. Thank you. That's right. They said, we are Moses' disciple. We, we know Moses. We, we are Moses' disciple. We're not his. You are. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So the man, the man that was blind, he answered and said unto them, why? Because they were like, we don't even know who this fellow is. So looking at verse 28, verse 28, they reviled him and said, thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciple. Now I'm going to just read from the King James Version 2930, and then it's going to lead us into the next question, which is a part of 30. So I'm going to read 29. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. And then check out what the blind man says. The blind man, well, the man who was blind, he answered and said unto them, Hmm, why, therein is a marvelous thing that ye know not from whence he is. And yet he hath blank, 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 three blanks. Blank, blank, blank. King James Version, verse 30. He said Jesus did something. And I think it's in the New International Version the same way. These three blanks. Type it in, please. Yes, open my eyes. Good job, Brother Foy. That is so right. That's right. He said, the man said, why? Therein is a marvelous thing that you know not from whence he is. Yet he has opened mine eyes. Amen. All right, so now let's go ahead and look at the next one. Now, the next answer actually comes from the New International Version. Verse, and it's part of verse 31. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He blank to the godly person who does his will. Please type in the word that I omitted from this Bible verse. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He blank to the godly person who does his will. Please type in. Listens. Good job, Brother Foy. That is correct. He listens to the godly person, the righteous person, the person who worships him. I like the way the King James Version says it. But if any man be a worshiper of God, that means they they spend time in God's word. They read his word. They study his word. They meditate on his word. They hide God's word in their heart so that they will not sin against the Lord. You know, and we all sin. But the good thing about it, if you are born, born again Christian, the Bible says if we sin, we have a mediator, which is Jesus Christ. You know, he's mediating for us. And he says if we confess our sins, he's, he's just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness and we can go to him you know so he's that mediator for us between god and man and i'm so thankful for it thank you so much brother foy that is correct listens yes he listens all right number 19. we only got two more to go so you know that number 20 is going to be the last five dollar question number 19. 
this is once again, the man that was blind, this is what he's saying. If this man was not of God, he's referring to Jesus, he could do blank. Verse 33, type in the chat box, what did he say? If this man was not of God, he could do blank. King James Version has it. I'm not certain how the other versions read. But if this man was not of God, he could do blank. Nothing. Good job. Thank you, Brother Foy. That is correct. Nothing is correct. Now, we're ready. This is another $5 question. And this is, um, is going to be our last question for tonight. So I hope you all are having a good time. If, if you're having a good time in this biblical discussion as we decide to liven it up a little with a game, fill in the Bible verse, just type in praise God or yes or amen. Type in something to let us know that you enjoyed uh, this type of biblical discussion as we're trying to make it as interactive as we can knowing we're online. Okay. Amen. Brother Foy said, yes, amen. All right. We're going to have to give you an extra $5 for that one. You're the first one to type that in. God bless you. All right. Okay. I hope he's not the only one that's enjoying it. I know I am. Okay. So here we go. Um, this is the very last question, and it's also worth $5. Thank you for the hearts and the thumbs up. Whoever did that, I can't tell, but thank you. Thank you. Miss Golden said, uh, yes, she's enjoying it. Thank you, Sister Golden. All right, here we go. This is the last question. Get ready. Jesus heard that the Jews had cast the man out. And when Jesus blanked him, Jesus said unto him, Does thou or do you believe on the Son of God? Once again, fill in the blank. Jesus heard that the Jews cast out the man, cast the man out. And when Jesus blanked him, he said unto him, does thou, which means do you, believe on the Son of God? This is found in verse 35. What did Jesus do? Jesus heard that the Jews had cast a man out. And Jesus did something. When Jesus blank him, it's an action word. Very good, Brother Foy, that's right. Jesus found him. Amen. Jesus found him. When Jesus found him, he located him. He said, do you believe on the Son of God? And thank you, Sister Golden. Amen. He found him. And listen to the man's reply. This is on verse, um, verse 36. He said, who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? Jesus said, for um, the work of God is that ye believe on him, whom God has sent. And we saw that when we studied John the 6th chapter, um, verse 29. So here we see, he said, who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? He's willing to believe on the Son of God. And we know that the Son of God is Jesus Christ. And verse 37, Jesus says, he said unto him, you have both seen him, and it is he that talks with thee. So, and then the man said, Lord, I believe. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to believe on Jesus Christ. Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me has everlasting life. This is the work of God. God wants us to believe on Jesus Christ that we can have everlasting life. I extend to you an invitation for you to give your life to Jesus Christ if you have it. Or maybe you gave your life to him a long time ago and you want to renew your life to him. You know, in the book of Hosea, the, the Bible tells us, God says, I'm married to the backslider. Maybe where you were in God, you backslid. What does that mean? That means you stop speaking to him the way you used to. You stop studying your word. You stop spending time with him. But God says he's married to the backslider. That means you could come back to him. So I'm going to say this prayer. And for those of you who've never given your life to the Lord, it's as easy as A, B, C. A, admit that you're a sinner. B, believe that God loves you so much that he sent Jesus on this earth to die for your sins and that God raised Jesus from the dead. C, confess that God raised Jesus from the dead and, that, and ask him to come into your heart. 
make him your Lord and he will make your life new. Romans 3 and 23 says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Anybody who says they are a Christian had to come to God, for we're all sinners. I don't care who you're thinking of. Oh, that person was always saved. No, the person wasn't always saved. We were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We all had to repent and give our life to God. Even Mary, Jesus' mother, was born in sin. So even she had to give her life to the Lord. So don't feel embarrassed. Give your life to Jesus. He will make it new. He will make you new. Even the priests have to give their life to God if they truly want to be born again and saved. Look, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, For if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. So, if you would like to rededicate your life to the Lord or give your life to the Lord, pray this prayer with me. Father God, I'm a sinner. I do not want to continue sinning against you. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. Lord, please come into my heart. Make me new. I will live for you all my days. Thank you, God. Thank you for saving me. I give you all the glory and praise. Thank you, I am saved. So now, if you pray that prayer in sincerity, then God has saved you, and you are saved. And we praise God. Welcome to God's family. So, praise God, amen. A whole bunch of hearts should be going on right now. I'm gonna put some, oops, I'm gonna put some hearts up here too. If you pray that prayer, then welcome to the family of God. You know, the Lord says, that there is, he says, I tell you, Jesus says this. He says, I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. So I just praise God. And that's found in St. Luke 15 and verse 7. So this is our conclusion. Well, this concludes our biblical discussion for tonight. I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for allowing us to come into your home with this biblical discussion as we participated in the fill in the Bible verse game. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you gained something from it. And um, until next time, I want you to just know that there's nothing you could do to make God stop loving you. He loves you more than you'll ever know. John 3 and 16 proves it. So I'm your host, Yvonne Roberts, the Christian Education Director here at Greater Bethel AME Church. Our pastor is the Reverend Solomon J. Roberts, Jr. And I just want you to remember that God loves you. We are Bethel, a house of prayer. We are Bethel Strong. God bless you. Good night. Hope to see you next week. Get ready. Those of you who want to read ahead of time, go ahead and read chapter 10. We're going to discuss it next week. God bless you. Good night.